Welcome to This Week Health Community. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels dedicated to keeping health IT staff current and engaged. Today, we have an interview in action from the 2023 fall conferences of Chime in San Antonio and Health in Las Vegas. And we want to thank our show sponsors who are investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. And they are Olive, Rubric, Trellix, Medigate, and F5. Check them out at thisweekhealth.com. And here we go. All right, another interview in action from the Chime Fall Forum. And today we're joined by Tim Zoff with McKinsey. Thanks for joining me. Looking Thank forward you. to the conversation. Thank you, Bill. Good to be here. Talk a little bit about the stuff you do for McKinsey. We're going to talk about the economics of healthcare, which should be a fun conversation, but go ahead. Sure. You know, after my CIO role at Northwestern Medicine, I went on to a consulting career now with McKinsey. And my role there as a senior advisor, senior expert, is I'm a resource to the company. It's, you know, it's, it's a healthcare division inside of 30,000 consultants. And therefore, I get an opportunity to work not only with providers, but life science industry, even on the private equity side. So I get a lot of touches in terms of what's happening in the healthcare marketplace, not only in the United States, but globally. Well, this should be a fun conversation. So you're seeing the big picture. One of the things I loved about being a, a consultant as opposed to being within a small organization is you touch a lot of things. Plus, you have access to a lot of research that, right. that your organization is doing and whatnot. Talk a little bit about the economic headwinds that healthcare is facing right now. Yeah, and I think there, there's a couple things we ought to talk about. First of all, at a macro level, just what we're seeing as we're coming out of this pandemic. You know, we're seeing sort of a multifaceted challenge within healthcare because we have inflation in the broader market. I think economists sort of agree now that some consensus agreement, we may be facing a recession next year. And the costs we're seeing in healthcare are escalating across the board, with labor being the top of that, almost a 25% increase that we're seeing in labor, but that's also true with, with supply and other aspects of healthcare. So really the dimensions of healthcare as we know it, we're seeing really broad-based challenges. And you couple that, you know, the workforce has has then said we have you know, less workers to treat patients, which are now coming back to us sort of with almost record capacity. So when you talk to healthcare systems, not only are they worried about cost and cost challenges, but it comes at a time as well when we have you know, record need to treat patients yeah. post-pandemic. So, so pandemic created a, an economic imbalance, if you will, and then we're heading into recessionary times. And we've never, by the way, we've never, come out of an inflationary time without a recession. So I, I'm not as optimistic as others that we're going to somehow skate through this and just whatever. And the other background I will give you is a lot of the CIOs, not on the air, but I'm mm -hmm. saying, hey, how does it look? And they're saying, I've just been asked for an 8% cut in IT. I mean, this is an area where typically we've seen investment or growth and the contracts aren't getting any smaller either. What are some of the strategies that we're talking about in healthcare to to weather the storm and maybe even thrive in the storm. Yeah, and I think I, I would put it in almost two dimensions. What is it we're doing with the health system as we know it today, right, in the environments in which we treat patients, and then the bets that people are making about what the future might look like. Right. And I think both things are happening simultaneously, but if you look at how we're trying to weather the storm right now within the existing health system, I would say that you know we do have technologies that allow us to be more efficient. Right. You know, we have, we still, within healthcare, hang on to estimates of you know 30% of what we do, right? And the cost of what we do still are there for the taking. That is, we can simplify our processes, reduce the tasks, right? Um, really automate everything that is, is really routine. And what's interesting is sometimes people say, well, healthcare is really unique. You know, our data within McKinsey would say, there are a lot of administrative processes, think about revenue cycle and elsewhere, that if you look at the automation that's happening across other industries, they've done those tasks. Right. So I think part of it is applying existing technology to even non-patient care tasks to really create you know, some immediate value in the system. And I think that's good from a cost perspective, but importantly what we have to do is say, how do we reduce all of the administrative and technology burden we have on caregivers? Because they're leaving the workforce, the jobs they have today are not the jobs they want to sign up to for tomorrow. And yeah. so it's both taking the cost out, but it's really reimagining what our workforce needs, assuming that those you know, 
hundreds of thousands of workers that are now leaving healthcare for something else, they're not going to come back to us or we're not going to keep them unless we really rethink how it is they want to provide care and they want to work in healthcare. You can't deliver healthcare without clinicians and nurses yes. and whatnot. And I'm, I'm a little concerned at this point from you know the economics and you hear things like, hey, 8% cut. Technology is one of the areas where we can create efficiencies, lighten yes. the bird and those kind of things. But traditionally in healthcare, we've missed that mark. We've added technology and added burden at the same time. Yes. And, and now we really have to make the technology work for the clinician. Are we, are, are, are there strategies, are there approaches where we're, we're finally getting more uh, efficiency out of the technology that we've put in? Yeah, and I, I do work with some early stage companies, and Lumion being one of them, but we, there are now technologies for which, you know, we're showing that you can do that that you can reduce, you know, admin, really reduce the, not only the task, but improve the coordination. And by doing so, then you release the, relieve the technology administrative burden. You know, I, we think, you know, a sort of a little history lesson, you know, on how we created even electronic records, you know, and thinking about really replacing paper processes, we didn't really rethink how we capture the data, how we serve up the data, how it's actually used intelligently, predictively, proactively. So I think now is the time to really step back from that and say, you know, maybe we didn't get all that right. And there's a, there's a brighter side on, brighter opportunity on the other side of it. So in some ways, it's, my answer would be, we're not going to replace the, a lot of the stack of the systems that we have. We're going to simplify many of them. But now we need to surround them with really intelligence that says, what tasks can go away? What tasks can we automate, right? what technology burden can we relieve then from especially the top of licensed caregivers, right? So that maybe we surround them with a different workforce. That's how we really have to go about thinking about it. One of the things as I look at this, you know, if we, we can easily make the mistake of reducing costs and creating more burden. And the, I mean, what about the That's workforce that remains, uh, both on the IT side and on the, on the clinical side? I mean, they're, how do you make sure that the workload just doesn't overwhelm that and yeah. exacerbate a problem uh, amongst your yeah. employees? Yeah, and what I'm seeing leading health systems do is say, look, at we have to think about the experience more broadly. You know, you just can't... In, in, internally and externally. In, internally, externally. So is it working for the, the patient? Is it working for the caregivers? Is it working for the staff? And make sure you're really measuring all three. Because we could right now, and I see strategies out there, let's just improve that patient experience or maybe provide more access. but if the, if the downside of that is it, it, it creates more burden, right? right, or puts more demands on clinicians because we don't have the capacity to do it, then we haven't solved it. So experience is really a, 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 a multifaceted issue that we now have to look at more holistically. So are we really measuring you know, what these changes in technology now are, not just the patients, but clinicians and staff, and, and really treat that as a equal part of the problem? So you're looking at the data, and is the clinician burnout getting worse or getting better at this point based on, on the data? Yeah, I think unfortunately it is getting a little worse because of the capacity issues we have and just not enough clinicians to care for the demand that we have in front of us. So I think we're almost at the nexus point now of, of saying, you know, hopefully it doesn't get any worse than it is. And that I think the data would say we've kind of settled out some of the you know, departures and leaves of, of caregivers. But those that are left are, as you know, it, it's not a satisfying job. <laughs> now, no, most I... people will say, how do I get through the day? And they're still paying very high costs for temporary staff and labor to come in and meet the demands they can't meet. So it's, it's very challenging, but it, it is, I think, a call to action from the industry to say, technology now needs to work for caregivers. We've got to turn, return them to the practice. And we've got to really rethink processes and roles holistically. And as I said before, I don't think technology is the fundamental issue. I think there is technology out there that can really improve and simplify and reduce costs in healthcare. It's just that we need to rally in a different way about how we do it. All right, we'll get back to our show in just a minute. We have a webinar coming up on December 7th, and I'm looking forward to that webinar. It is on how to modernize the data platform within healthcare, the modern data platform within healthcare, and I'm really looking forward to the conversation. We just recorded five pre-episodes for that, 
and so they're going to air on Tuesday and Thursdays leading up to the episode, and we have a great conversation about the different aspects, different use cases around the modern data platform, and how agility becomes so key, and data quality, and all those things. So great conversation, looking forward to that. Wednesday, December 7th at one o'clock, love to have you join us. We're going to have health system leaders from Memorial Care and others, the CDW is going to have some of their experts on the show as well. So check that out. You can go to our website, thisweekhealth.com. Top right hand corner, you'll see the upcoming webinars. Love to have you be a part of it. If you have a question coming into it, one of the things we do is we collect the questions in the sign up form because we want to make sure that we incorporate that into the discussion. So hope to see you there. Now back to the show. I was talking to a partner vendor for an organization and they said, you know, we went into this organization, they want us to solve this problem, and what we identified was, you don't even need our technology to solve this problem. You just need to be attending physicians. What was happening is, the discharge for the patient that was ready to be discharged was taking eight hours, and they didn't have bed space, they didn't have whatever, and they're like, look, you just need to get to the attending seven and a half hours earlier, and yes. that, it's like, you don't need technology, you don't need, but you need to really take the time to look at all those processes and look at all those things. And you would think that all of that has happened. By the way, this is a large academic medical center that has that problem. Yeah. You sit there yeah. and go, really? I mean, this is our, these are our best and brightest, and we're not solving some of the, some of the basic challenges. And I, I think it's, it's sort of human nature, and I, you know, I was in an academic institution for 20 years. I think healthcare oftentimes thinks, is, it thinks very incrementally and is, and is risk averse. It's like, why would I change something that actually worked reasonably well tomorrow? Maybe I make some incremental improvements around it. Yeah. And that works for a while. But if in fact the net result is you're just layering more function, more technology around processes that need to be really rethought or roles that need to be rethought, then we're not doing our job. So I like to think that the optimistic side says, with our backs to the wall, knowing that in fact, you know, the economic headwinds will remain, we've got these workforce challenges. I'm seeing bolder steps in health systems. They're really standing back and saying, you know, what causes our workforce to stay or go? Can we really you know, rethink how it is we deliver care? And, and to my other point about not only what's happening inside of the health system, but our health system's pl placing more bets on ambulatory, more bets on consumer-based right. care, more bets on hospital employer, home. hospital at home, more bets on where the employer, how the employer plays into this role. So the, we're, we're, we need to, you know, sort of reestablish what automation and technology looks like in the as-built health system as we have it today, but importantly, place bets on where healthcare is really headed. The growth and profitability, by the way, is not in the traditional health system. It is being built on, from the outside and oftentimes with competitive forces, you know, being the key actors in that arena. Fertile ground for change. Fertile ground for change. Tim, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Another great interview. I want to thank everybody who spent time with us at the conferences. I love hearing from people on the front lines and it is phenomenal that they have taken the time to share their wisdom and experience with the community, which is greatly appreciated. We also want to thank our channel sponsors one more time who invest in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. They are Olive, Rubric, Trellix, Medigate, and F5. Thanks for listening. That's all for now.